Archaeoastronomers think this about the why and the how of the Magi's reaction to the greatest conjunction. You'll remember that this once in a recorded history planetary event took place in the constellation of Pisces. What I didn't mention was that for centuries previous to this, the ancient Persians had closely associated the constellation of Pisces with the Jewish people. Why do you ask? Well, around 500 BC, the Jews were coming to the end of a long period of exile and captivity in Persia. A key event at that time was a significant Jewish rebellion against a murderous rogue faction in the Persian nobility. This rebellion was eventually viewed by both Persians and the Jews as a kind of uh, liberation and unity event. <laughs> the Jews celebrate the rebellion to this very day in their very important feast of Purim. The nation of Israel, by the way, views this ancient rebellion as an eternal validation of their right to self-defense. That's one of the reasons why they're so aggressive in defending their country. It's because of this. It's because of Purim. Oh, and you probably know already that the Israelis are no longer friends with the Persians. Right? Okay. Anyway, this rebellion took place in the Jewish lunar month of Adar, which roughly corresponds to February March which corresponds to the astrological sign Pisces. So the Magi, as elite astrologers, likely interpreted this greatest conjunction of Jupiter, the planet of kings, with Saturn, which was the planet of command and authority, in the constellation of Pisces as an unmistakable celestial pronouncement of an extraordinary king about to emerge in the land of the Jews. To them, it might have been really, really logical. And so that's how they knew, and that's why they followed all the way to Judea. 